Mm, it's crunchy, it's delightful. When did I get rib sauce on me? Now. When did that happen? Hey! <laughs> you? <I don't> <laughs> Hello, welcome. We are here in Brooklyn at TGI Fridays. I don't know if you can see the sign. It's fine if you can't, but you just believe me that we're here. This is like one of the last places on my bucket list for us. That was like one of the big ones that I really wanted to get. Chelsea won't let me dance in the intro because she says it's distracting. We are trying all of the most popular menu items at TGI Fridays. Yes, that means the wings, the potato skins, burgers, sandwiches, pasta, seafood, dessert, cocktails. There's so much to try, so little time. I'm like getting sweaty thinking about it. <laughs> we have to go, we have to go inside, we have to eat. We're very busy, let's go, come on, come on. We're not starting with alcohol. Alcohol's round two, so at least the first round, I'll be somewhat sober. <laughs> we'll start out on a very strong note, and then it'll just crash and burn. This is a first for us. When I was telling my family that I have, I was going to TGI Fridays today, they were like, I swear you've already been there. I'm like, no, no, no. Trust me, I thought the same, but no. It's been on your guys' list for a very long time, but we are finally here. We're finally going to eat everything at TGI Fridays. <laughs> have I said how much I love the appetizer round? It's my favorite round. I really should love the last round so I have something to look forward to, but this is my, this is my time to shine. <sighs> this is going to be a problem. I can already tell there's going to be a dunking of the elbow in one, in at least one sauce by the end of today. We're going to start with the potato skins. Now, when I think TGI Fridays, Potato skins is the first thing that comes to my mind. It's a little like bucket for your bacon, a bacon bucket. We're gonna put some sour cream, some chives. Mm -hmm. My qualm with potato skins is that there's too much potato most of the time, not enough crunch, not enough skin. This one has the right amount of crunchiness. I think you could actually hear it when I bit into it. That's what I want. This is like a perfect appetizer for the whole table. I don't think I would actually eat the whole thing myself because it's basically like eating, what, two whole potatoes if you do that. Have you ever wanted a pound of fries in a bucket? This is a new menu item for TGI Fridays. It's a bucket of fries, quite literally, and it comes with mountains of cheese and bacon. We got our green onions in there. We got jalapenos. We have also this sauce. I'm not gonna lie, before we started shooting, I did try it and it's amazing. It's this buffalo ranch, I think. You said barbecue ranch. Okay. French fries are just sauce vehicles right now for me. We're only on the second item. This is my favorite sauce ever. It's rivaling the campfire sauce that we had from Red Robin. Holy f that's good. But it's way more like punchy. The actual fries itself, they're French fries, they're delicious. They're gooey and cheesy and bacony. Can I keep the sauce and then go to the next item? Thank you, mom. Actually, I need a cherry limeade slush break. So this is the cherry limeade slush. It has that really like crunchy ice. It's the right amount of tart from the lime. It's like a cherry lollipop. I almost want to say a Jolly Rancher, but it's more like a cherry lollipop with lime juice on it. Very refreshing. We have the boneless buffalo wings, which are basically just really thick tenders. And I obviously got blue cheese with it. I'm just tasting really lovely fried breading all throughout. The buffalo is honestly, I would say mild. It's not, it's not punching me in my face and making me wanna sweat buckets, which is great. I don't want that right now. This is delicious. It's like crunchy. It might be more, it might be like, the ratio of breading and chicken might be like one to one. I'm not mad about it, but it's actually very delightful. I had them add Philly cheesesteak egg roll onto the menu for today because one of my favorite things in the world is Philly cheesesteak. And then my other second favorite thing in the world are egg rolls. They should be on more menus, honestly, because they just like perfectly wrap everything up in a little bundle, like a little blanket. And then you just have the happiness on the inside of all the melted cheesy gooiness. I'm pretty sure this is like a cheese whiz sauce. It has that little bit of pepperiness to it, like a green bell pepper or something in there. Oh, wait, look at that, look at that. 
it's loaded in there. See that, you got the peppers, you got red. Do you see, is there a green pepper in there you can see? I can always stand it to be even more loaded, but then it's gonna break apart. Egg rolls and dumplings for me are almost like, I, I, if you made me choose, it would be very challenging. I would ask for double the cheese sauce though. Up next is the classic Friday's combo. You get your boneless wings, your potato skins, and your mozzarella sticks, and you get sauces for all of them. I'm gonna go with the mozzarella stick because technically we've already had the potato skins. These are very wide mozzarella sticks. They're not like little tubular ones. I wonder if we'll get another cheese pull out of it. It might, oh, no, it's still happening. It's still happening. That is the best part about a mozzarella stick is the pull. Nothing else to me. <laughs> Try with some marinara sauce. Okay. It does taste like it has more seasoning than some of the other ones I've had from other chain restaurants. Like on a scale of one to 10, 10 is like my love of egg rolls. One is my hate for peppers. Mozzarella sticks are at like a five or a six. They're always very consistent to me. You get the bonus wings, the potato skins. I feel like I could eat these again to tell you that they're good, or I could just tell you. <laughs> We've already had them, you already know what I'm gonna say. I'm very excited about this. So it comes with your shrimp, your ribs, and it looks like boneless wings as well. The boneless wings have this really beautiful sesame seeds on them, and it looks really sticky and candied. Oh. This is like super candied chicken, and it's sticky and crunchy. It also has a kind of more of like this, not soy, no, teriyaki. It tastes like teriyaki more than a barbecue. We have some fried, look at those beautiful shrimps. Little shrimpy guys, I'm gonna put in the whiskey glaze sauce. The chicken's better than the shrimp. There's no way of competing. This one's like flavor blasted, and this one's just gently, well not even, I don't know if it's gently fried. I'm gonna say it's gently fried. Rib time, my favorite time. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. Let's see. I think the chicken wins, but ribs come second on this on this sampler. This is, I mean, the ribs are delicious. The chicken tastes like it's double breaded and super crispy and crunchy on the outside. The ribs does have that. Like, look at all this. Can you see all like the, mm -hmm. it's like the crystallized sugar up in here. Oh, okay, the skin though. If you just eat the rib skin, that comes in first place. So we have the last of the round, famous whiskey glazed skewers. And this has no business being on a skewer, just gonna say it right now. Like, <laughs> what? Also, these, these are supposed to be sliders, but these sliders are pretty big. I asked them, has anyone eaten this off the stick? And they said, no. I wanna be the first person to eat off the stick, but I also don't even know what side you attack from. This chicken, I want the recipe for this. I wanna make this at home. Maybe I don't wanna know what's in it. <laughs> it's probably not good for you, but that is, whew. I just, I think I like the candy, the bite to it. It's so chewy. It's a little guy. Chelsea. We have the whiskey glazed burger slider with um, a mountain. I always say mountain, I need a pile. Pile doesn't sound as glorious, but a pile of onions on here. Lots of cheddar cheese. I see some sesame seeds up in here. I kind of want to dunk it, I think. Okay, don't dunk it. It's too sweet when you dunk it. Let me try it on its own. Don't recommend that. <laughs> the burger already has the whiskey glaze on there, so you do not need to dunk it like I just did because then it's just like sweetness overload. It's almost like a candied burger in that sense. Without the sauce, it is really, it's still slightly sticky, which I don't hate. It also has like a, an actual char grilled taste like someone was outside flipping the burgers. Like it doesn't taste like manufactured. <laughs> Burgers, you know what? Like, it actually tastes like someone put it on somewhere, like on the on the grill. This has been the stickiest round so far. It's only the first round, so it can only get stickier. <laughs> My favorite thing from this round has to be the whiskey glazed chicken. Like, hands down, I'm thinking about it when I drive home today. I'm gonna think about it when I wake up tomorrow. I might think about it. I'm not sure. Then, can I say the cherry limeade slush as yeah. a second favorite? It's truly. I sound like a commercial. I'm like, it's refreshing. It's cooling down my stomach from all the sticky sweet stuff with more sweet stuff, but it's just the right amount of tart. And it doesn't even need alcohol. That's a big moment. <laughs> I don't want to go to round two because I just want to eat the chicken. 
but I am, it's fine. This is, this is what we have to do. This is the show. I go to the second round, but I will be, that I'm boxing up and keeping for myself. <laughs> you can have like one bite. <laughs> oh, can you hear the sizzle? Like if I lean, I'm getting a cheese facial right now. Ooh, do I want to sip of the Long Island first? Maybe I do. I was deprived of alcohol in the first round. That's a joke, everyone. Okay, we have their Long Island iced tea. We're not in Long Island, on Long Island right now, but now we can pretend we are for a second. Oh, nothing like pure alcohol and a little bit of Coke. <laughs> this is concerning that I can't taste too much of the alcohol in it, which is dangerous for Long Islands because there is so much. When I was in college, I would order Long Island iced teas because it had the most alcohol in it, like per price for where I was staying. And I was like, oh, perfect. So I'm like saving money and getting drunk. That's like not the way you should be thinking about your drinks. <laughs> we have the sizzling chicken and cheese. So the mashed potatoes kind of look like cute little bums, little like corgi butts, little mashed potato butts. Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna have a bunch of cheese here and peppers and onions and a piece of chicken and cheese. Chicken is tender, moist. Sometimes when you have like the white meat instead of the dark meat, it can be kind of dry and sad. This one isn't that way, which is so delightful. I have to have one more bite. I have to inspect. The cheese isn't in your face, which I actually enjoy because the peppers and onions are in your face. It all is like in harmony together. Nothing is outshining the other one. I should, I'm like, oh wait, no, before I go into the next sizzling one, I'm gonna do a fun fact because I forgot, I didn't do a fun fact in round one. In the 70s in New York, not many women were like going out to bars and getting cocktails. So Alan Stillman was like, all right, I'm gonna create like a really cool cocktail bar, TGI Fridays, thank God it's Fridays. He had created this bar so that single ladies and men had places to go. It just wasn't quite a thing, which is kind of crazy to think about in modern day. The bar is the course where you go when you're single. Um, maybe not of course, but in my, <laughs> for me, of course. But I think that's really fascinating. It was actually started as a cocktail bar, not like the food wasn't really the big part of it. It was purely cocktails and they had like lines wrapping around the restaurant. And it was actually one of the first few restaurants in New York to have that kind of reception where so many people wanted to come. Okay, I asked for my steak to be medium rare, so don't get all mad if you see any redness. That's how I like it. Should I dunk it? Oh, dunk yeah. in the whiskey glaze? I don't, don't get the chicken one, get this one. This one's so much better. Oh my gosh, there's no competition here. It still is giving me like a teriyaki flavor instead of a, the whiskey glaze. It just has that little bit of um, a hit at the back of your throat. It's like attacks you for a second. Oh, oh, and they have Cajun fried onions on top. We didn't even talk about those. They are so perfectly little tiny guys. I'm gonna dip it in here. Yeah, you don't even get fried onions with this one. Obviously choose this one. This is delicious. I'm not gonna touch the mashed potatoes because that's just filler for me, but I would eat all that steak. We have the Southern Fried Chicken Sandwich. This looks like a planet. This looks like Saturn for some reason to me. It has like this, this chicken patty is so massive. Avocado, cheddar cheese, oh, pickles, tomatoes and onion. And ooh, mayo, maybe that's a spicy mayo. Maybe it's the barbecue ranch from earlier. I hope it's the barbecue ranch, okay. This is just, it's huge. It's the size of my face. I would say that this is like pretty mild in flavor compared to what we were just having. Like that had so much sauce and flavor on it and this is much more like simplistic. It has like creamy avocado, just a little bit of cheese and the chicken is also like so, so thin. It reminds me of like how chicken parm is, right? Where it's like beaten. I would say this is a very standard chicken sandwich. I definitely like the steak and cheese way more. I would ask for the barbecue ranch on the side to put on top of this. That's like, that would send it over the edge. Another fun fact, because I don't feel like eating again right this second. <laughs> TGI Fridays, was one of the first places to start happy hours. And that to me is mind boggling to think that happy hour wasn't a thing until the 70s. Happy hour should have been a thing forever in history. It is a phenomenal thing. Getting cheaper drinks and apps for your friends, hanging out. 
thank you TGI Fridays for making it a thing because happy hour is like my favorite time. Okay, chicken tenders. And it looks like we got a honey mustard here. It's very yellow, so it might be more mustard than honey. I like the chicken tenders better than the chicken wings that we had earlier, the boneless chicken wings, because there's way more meat in here. You still get that really great crunchy breading, and I think this is just like a childhood dream, having really delicious chicken tenders. But this one has way more meat in it than the boneless chicken wings. Mmm, it's crunchy, it's delightful. When did I get rib sauce on me? Now. When did that happen? It's here. We saved the best for last for this round. We have these massive slow cooked ribs, slathered. This is, I would, this is the appropriate use of the word slathered, barbecue sauce on top. This barbecue sauce is like glue and has already stuck to my shirt, my hands, probably in my hair at some point. It is just like the perfect amount of like sticky. You're gonna find it all over you the next day. I'm gonna find it on my camera. It's gonna be on your camera at some point if it's not already. Yeah, that sauce is sticky. That's some thick sauce. I do think I like the ribs from last round. The whiskey glazed more. I think the whiskey glazed has like, has that kick that I want to it. But if you're not a spicy person, this is a great option for you. Also, this is a massive amount of ribs. I don't know who's eating. This is actually the size of my arm. I would almost say get it as an appetizer for the whole table. This is so much to eat as one person. My favorite thing from this round is the, oh my gosh, and I can never say it. The TG, the Friday's signature sirloin steak tip. Nope, signature whiskey steak and cheese sirloin stip, steak tip. <laughs> this one, this one. I, I cannot say it as a full complete sentence. My brain, my, there's only a few brain cells left in here at this point in my life. Get this, this is the best one here. Ready okay. for the next round? I'm gonna lick the sauce until we get to the next round. That's beautiful. Wow. This is the strawberry henny. It is beautiful. We have Hennessy, Grand Marnier, strawberry puree, a little bit of sour mix. It looks like a summertime drink to just get, you know, real day drunk too. Oh. That's alcohol. This would be something like, you're like sitting by a dock and you drink like two of them and you just like fall off the dock into the water. I usually don't like when you can taste the alcohol, but since it's like the Hennessy and Grand Marnier flavors, it's not like tequila to the face, right? It's not like shouting at you in the same way. It's more just like letting you enjoy, enjoy yourself. Are we done with the round? If I open my eyes, I'll be gone. <laughs> we have the Cajun shrimp and chicken pasta with a little breadstick. Look at him, he's so cute. This is a step up from fettuccine alfredo. The fettuccine alfredo is very one note, one level, very basic. This has just that little extra kick to it. Mmm. You know, comfort food, you want it to like warm you up, give you a big hug. This is like giving you a hug, but then also kind of like hitting you in the back really hard. I'm taking a drink break. Oh wait, I have to do a fun fact before I start again. Fun fact. Nearly every TGI Fridays has a propeller and a rowing skull in their locations. This one has a propeller. I don't, we think that there's a rowing skull over there. I think that's what one of those is over there. But the propeller will sh cut to B-roll, show it. For the first dollar that they made, they have like the general manager sign it and then they put it on the propeller. The propeller is to show like, <whistles> TGI Fridays propelling forward. And then the rowing skull is for teamwork. Yeah? <laughs> okay, fish and sticks, fish and, <laughs> fish and chips. Oh boy. Fish and potato sticks. <laughs> I really want vinegar for this too. Oh, yeah. My favorite thing about fish and chips is just how like, I'm gonna try, try saying this in a nice way, because I, I do mean it in a nice way. It's just so much breading that the fish kind of falls out of it and you just have pockets of just breading. And that is so delicious, because then you put it in the tartar sauce and it's like eating the fried carcass. <laughs> but it's good. I like that part of it. Like, you know you have a little bit left over? 
you just eat the fried part on its own and then it's crunchy, I'm all for it. I love that. We have the dragon glazed salmon. Chelsea and I are huge salmon fans. This will get eaten immediately if I don't eat it right now all on camera. We've got a little bit like a pica de gallo situation with some mango, tomato, red onions. So when I heard dragon, I was thinking it was gonna be spicy. It's so interesting. It's not like, I'm used to teriyaki on, on this. It's just, it's just more of like, um, has like a Mexican flavoring to it for me. Even though it's called dragon, I don't know. My brain is confused by that one. We have fried shrimp and some tartar sauce here. Not tartar, oh my God, cocktail sauce. Is anyone else concerned for my well-being? We have fried shrimp and cocktail sauce. It's very clearly cocktail sauce. Fried shrimp is fried shrimp to me. It has a little bit of like a crunch to it, the sweetness from the shrimp. The cocktail sauce is so horseradish forward. Like, I feel like cocktail sauce usually is just kind of sweet. A little almost too like tomato-y sweet feeling where it's, it feels like it's almost a ketchup. This, this is like true cocktail sauce to me. It's, it's the kind where it kind of clears out your sinuses. It's like strong. I love that. I love strong flavors like that. I, it also reminds me of a Bloody Mary kind of. Ooh, what if you put the fried shrimp on a Bloody Mary and then put the cocktail sauce in it? I don't know, just some thoughts. Fun fact, fun fact. Alan Stillman, founder, in an interview, I can't remember where he was being interviewed. He, he, he says that he claims that the Tom Cruise character from the movie Cocktail is very much based on his life. And the cocktail sauce, that's my connection. That was the end of the story. <laughs> I honestly thought that movie was two movies. I've seen it many times with my parents and I thought when he was on the island making all the drinks, that was like movie one. And then when he goes back to New York and opens up his own cocktail place, I won't give away too much more than that. I thought that was a second movie. Anyways. <laughs> okay, favorite thing food wise is the Cajun shrimp and chicken pasta and then the cocktail sauce from the fried shrimp. The fried shrimp is great. I mean, it, it's fried shrimp, but the cocktail sauce is a second favorite. And then this, strawberry henny. It's just making me feel very delightful inside. Job well done, TGI Fridays. What round is next? What round is next? Round next is the fourth round. Burger round. Okay, okay, okay. If I keep saying okay, it'll be okay. This is like a, a burger wall hitting me, seeing all this in front of me. This is, I've said it before, it's monstrous. We're starting with the ooey gooey Mott's stick melt. If you're wondering what makes it so ooey gooey and a Mott stick melt, well, it's just a ton of Mott sticks melted in the middle of like a grilled cheese sandwiched. And then you, of course, you have a Mott stick on top of it. Oh my God, it's just Mott sticks on top of Mott sticks with bread in between and cheese. <laughs> I can't quite discern what I am eating. It is just a handful of Mott sticks. It's like you took all of the Mott sticks and combined them together and dipped them into the sauce with butter and cheese on top of, it's cheese on top of cheese on top of cheese. My brain is truly being, is so confused right now. Like, it's a grilled cheese Mott stick baby monster. Yeah. If you love your mozzarella sticks, like if you're a fiend for them, this is the ultimate <laughs> proof of your love. You have to show your love by ordering this and having this. Oh, am I doing donut burger next? We're just gonna go from one insane thing to the next? Take a drink. Okay, okay. We have the margarita. I love this in a hurricane glass. It's very like, hurricane glasses always just make me feel like fun and flirty. <laughs> what was that sound? My, I like had my finger on like this and it went, I'm not gonna be able to do it again. I made like a, it's almost equal, the tequila like sour mix with it would end up on the floor if I ordered two of those, probably. Oh, okay. No, we're, okay. It's a donut burger. It's a, it's a dessert burger. I asked 
the people who work here if if people actually order this and they said yes people do actually order this and I just I need you to directly call me DM me email me and tell me like who you are and and, and did you eat the whole thing? That I, that's really what I want to know. Can you, it, it's just fried onions, big ass burger, bacon, cheese. Hey Julia. What? You do not understand. <laughs> you can go to prison for <laughs> 10 minutes now. Go to camera operator prison for that one. I just, Maybe this needs to be slow-mo too. No, it doesn't. You don't need this in slow-mo. You do it. not need it in slow-mo. Do. do people actually eat it in one bite, you think? That's not even possible. There's no way someone goes <laughs> My dentist says I have a very small mouth, so. She got bass in the bag. Bass in the She got bass in the bag. Like the bottom to a track. Below the tiny way she stacked. This is the messiest burger I've had in a long time. I love the texture. It reminds me almost like a brioche bun on steroids almost. It's so sweet and it's actually, it's 100% worth committing trying to get the big bite because if you can get both donuts, both of the donut buns and the burger and the fried onions, it is the sweet and salty, savory combo I didn't think I ever needed in my life, but I'm very much enjoying it. Oh. Wait. Is there a pickle in there? There's pickle. It has everything. This burger has everything. You got your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You you eat this and you're good for the day. It is terrifying to look at. It is beautiful and terrifying all in the same vein. <sighs> okay, I need something tame. I need something that just like isn't two donuts and a burger. We're gonna do this first because I just have to have something that looks like a burger. We're trying the Friday's signature whiskey glazed burger with bacon, cheese, pickles, tomatoes, red onion, lettuce. I love the look of this. I like the condiments. I, it feels like more of like a fresh burger. I'm hoping there's no donut, mystery donut or mozzarella stick somehow secretly in here. <laughs> the whiskey glaze, I'm just gonna keep saying it tastes like teriyaki to me. It's like this teriyaki sauce that my mom had when I was a kid that we put on everything. I do love that they're able to put it on every single menu item. And it kind of has a different flavor depending on what they're mixing it with. Nothing is in competition with each other. Donut burger is in competition with itself in many ways. This burger is like, has gone to therapy, has like done its work and is like fully recognized and a developed burger. This looks like the most quintessential TGI Fridays thing you could ever do is by putting the potato skin on the top. There's something about it just really makes me happy. Do you think you eat the potato skin with the burger or are you enjoy it on its own? I think on its own. Okay. This is amazing that you get a little appetizer with your burger. So if you didn't get a potato skin earlier, well now is your time. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> just a handful of fries in your burger. Okay. I'm gonna go with the side that has more cheese. The fries are adding like a chewiness to it. I love that the cheese, it's so thick on here because of the french fries. It's like they could have, they added a thicker blanket of cheese to it than typical. Like I feel like usually you get like one slice of cheese on a burger, maybe two, but this feels like a really thick, heavy, like weighted cheese blanket. Mm. This one's juicier than the other one too. Yeah. If you're a french fry fiend, you're a potato, <laughs> potato head. If you're a potato head, you would enjoy this burger so much. What's your favorite? We haven't finished. We have Philly cheesesteak still. Oh my God, we have more burgers. Yep. I could have let that one slide too. I could have been like, yeah, we're done. <laughs> Next round. <laughs> you're an honest person. But it's also because I really, really, I, I love Philly cheesesteaks. I'm not from Philly. I have like no connection to it. You have more of a connection than I do. And but I just I f***ing love meat and cheese. I don't know. I used to have it when I was a kid. We, we used to get it from, um, like from Sam's Club or Costco, the frozen box of them. And I would microwave them. It's disgusting. I would eat like two after school sometimes. It's a really well balanced diet I was on um, as a child. So we have a Philly cheesesteak burger. I hope that this is just like cheese whiz to the face. Oh, 
I want like white cheddar all over it. That's a lot of peppers in there too. Do you like peppers on your Philly cheesesteak? I love it, but I don't need it. It's nice it's there. If it didn't show up to the party, you wouldn't be like, where is it? No, the whiz. If you don't have the whiz, what are you doing? I could stand to have even more whiz on this. This has a lot on it. I would say I would get a bowl of it and dip it in like an au jus sauce of whiz sauce. That is, that's the only thing I think that can make this burger better. I think the donut burger is very surprising to me. I don't know if I would order it, but I am shocked by how much I did like it. I thought it was going to be terrifying for my body. <laughs> no, Philly cheesesteak wins. Are we on the last round coming up? Yeah. I wish I had more fun facts so I could slow down time <laughs> so we don't have to go to the next round. <laughs> but my brain is full of mozzarella sticks and cheese whiz and whiskey glaze sauce. So we will go to the dessert round then. <laughs> That is so fun. What would a Julia Tries Everything episode be without dessert round with two drinks? <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna feel that donut burger for the rest of my life. We are in the dessert round and we have a brownie which is melting before my eyes so I need to eat it quickly. It is just molten thick brownie with some ice cream and are those candied pecans maybe? I hope so. This is illegal in many ways. This is giving me, from Cracker Barrel, we had that Coca-Cola cake where it had this like really thick fudgy frosting. I would order it for my birthday. Oh, that's what this has on it too. And some caramel. Oh my God. I don't know what they did to this brownie and I don't really care what they did to it. It's amazing. Maybe I wash it down with a fireball margarita. This is fireball? It looks like the same color as the margarita one. Oh no, there, that's fireball. That is fireball. This looks so similar to the other one. It, I was convinced there wasn't fireball in here. But when you take one quick sip and it is that, that red hot cinnamon flavor in the back of your throat just immediately just kicks you. I like this better than the regular margarita from here. I don't know if I could have more than one because it is pretty sweet, but that is at least like really, like each time you take a sip, you're kind of confused by it for a moment. And then it's really enjoyable. This is from Carlos Bakery actually. So it's a limited edition rainbow layered cake. This is a unicorn little kid's dream. Do we think that the layers taste any different? You think it's just coloring? Oh, it's soft. I didn't think that was, I didn't think it was gonna break off like that. Wow. It's beautiful to look at, but that's all it really has for me. I don't find it to have much more going on besides the color and the look of it. If you were getting a birthday cake, you know, and you wanted like that special piece of the table and you want a really pretty picture, I think this is great for that. But if I was going for just pure flavor, the brownie explosion, oh my God, like that. Sorry, Carlos Bakery, you make great cakes and that cake is really soft and moist, I must say. Just, it's very one note. Woo! <gasps> it's okay, it's okay. She hit the drink. <gasps> you must now have a sip of it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have our, co our cotton oh tail, co cotton, <laughs> cotton candy margarita. Oh my God. Or, yeah, cotton candy Cosmo. Good Lord. That tastes way better than I thought it was going to. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't mean that in a mean way. I just don't like cotton candy. It's very, like, much more tropical than I expected. Mmm. Pineapple, yeah. What a cool, like, little showpiece having the cotton candy in there and melting it down. But that's really the only cotton candy flavoring in the whole Cosmo. I've had some bubblegum cotton candy type cocktails before, and it's it is, it is a tough one to take down. This is extremely chuggable, extremely drinkable, delightful. You wouldn't even know that there was cotton candy in here if you hadn't seen it before. This might be my favorite drink of the day, honestly. It's just so pleasant, <laughs> pleasant to be around. Giant churro twist. Should I pretend like it's like a, like a sword? <laughs> okay. 
There's three of these. There were three of these in this in this bag. Like it's the size of a baguette, but a churro. I don't even know how you guys are making this back there. This is this is quite a feat. This churro is extremely light and fluffy. I can tell already. A lot of churros I've had are super more of like crunchy and dry. It just depends on you know what you like, but this I I do like where it has a little bit more of that filling and a little bit more doughy and soft. All right, let's put the pillow in the chocolate. Ooh. Hmm. Oh, that's a lot of chocolate. Oh, I put a lot of chocolate on there. It did not need that much chocolate. Don't dip it like I just did. I only taste the chocolate. Here, let me do the let me do the caramel. I really like this for the table to share. We have the dipping sauces. I think you could get like maybe six people to have this dessert, especially if you're only having like half of one. But if you dip it in the chocolate, whew, that is a time and a half. And then the caramel is much more subtle. I think the caramel with the churro with the cinnamon feels like a happy marriage that will last a long time. But I think the chocolate with the churro is like, they're still just dating. They, I don't know if they're gonna make it. Without a doubt, the Cosmo, Brownie, and Churro are my favorites from this round, which means three out of five of them were my favorite, which is honestly a great review, right? We are going to pack up all of our leftovers. We're gonna shove them all in the car. Chelsea's gonna be driving me home. We have lots of leftovers to give out. I'm very excited. This is a wonderful start to the day because it's the start of my day. It's noon now. <laughs> and that is a wrap. Wrap. I'm gonna stay here for as long as they let me. Oh, it's so warm. It's like all of the cheese inside of me is baking.